Hey, what's up YouTube and my fellow eBay sellers? It's Robert back with probably one of my last videos for 2020 and uh, can't get this year over with fast enough, am I right? Um, I plan to probably make a video kind of recapping some of my holiday sales, share with you guys some, um, you know, things that I personally um, learned and benefited from over the holiday selling season. But more importantly, I wanted to try and give you guys some strategies to go into 2021, um, hopefully with a little bit more firepower um, and trying to overcome some of the things that I'm seeing a lot of people complain about um, online when it comes to selling on eBay, as well as when it, when it comes to thrifting in uh, some of the thrift stores and the garage sales and things. Um, but a lot of this kind of focuses around the tendency for us to um, hone in on specific brands and think that we can do really well with these brands because we see other people are doing well with them. Um, and I could be guilty of this as well because I've made videos that I've talked about my favorite brands for men's long sleeve shirts or for sweaters or whatever it might be. Ties is another big niche for me, shoes. Um, but I've always tried to give a little bit of a caveat to that, that the brand is only one piece of the puzzle and you can't just assume that when you find that brand, you need to pick it up um, because obviously you need to be focused on a lot of other things about that brand and about that specific item before you make the determination of whether or not you need to buy it. Um, and I've seen that people are really frustrated because they heard one particular brand sells well, but they've got a whole huge inventory of that brand and they can't sell any of it. Um, and largely it's because they're, they're missing the bigger picture there. There's also something to be kind of gained uh, in identifying features within those brands that's going to much better equip you for discovering new brands that you'll be much more profitable with on an individual item basis. And you're much less likely to find that Goodwill has priced out of the realm for you to be profitable on. So what I'm talking about is when you identify brands that um, you know people say, oh, this brand sells really well on eBay, it's because of certain things about that brand, the quality, the material, the style, um, you know, specific features that have made that brand popular. And if you can start finding the common traits between these different brands that all do well, then you're going to go out into your Goodwills and you're going to be more likely to discover new brands that have those same traits that are very valuable that maybe nobody else has ever mentioned, talked about, people at Goodwill aren't familiar with, and you're going to have the information to find these diamonds in the rough, so to speak, those you know real true pieces of, of gold that are there to be found at thrift stores. Um, I've done this very successfully with the niches that I've kind of honed in on. Um, I found a lot of shoe brands that nobody's ever mentioned on eBay, um, nobody's ever mentioned on YouTube. I just happened to stumble ac uh, across them and because they fit a lot of the criteria that I use for other brands that I do know, I decided to look them up and and ultimately, you know, searched them out on eBay and found out, yes, I could make money on them. And so I purchased them. Uh, so I'm going to use an example that I found just earlier today in ties. That is exactly what I want to try and, you know, communicate to you guys that going into 2021, I want you to change your mentality a little bit from just these are the brands I need to be searching for to this is how I can identify if a brand is good or not or if that brand is worth me looking up on eBay when I stumble across something I've never seen before in Goodwill. All right, so um, this is actually a tie. Um, I'll show you guys real close up what I found it for as well as why I recognized that I should look this tie up and then ultimately why I bought it. Okay, so here you guys can see $2.49 on this tie. And the brand here is a brand called uh, Charvette. Um, it's C-H-A-R-V-E-T. And then below that it says uh, Place Place or Place Vendome. And you can see S-O-I-E, which is um, the uh, French word for silk. And then on the other side, it says silk. Well, one of the things with Hermes ties, I knew, okay, S-O-I-E is something that you look for on a Hermes tie as part of uh, identifying it's um, a real tie or a real Hermes. 
um, but it also lets me know, okay, it's French. Another portion of the tie here, you can actually see as it zooms in. There we go. Made in France. Um, on top of that, you know, just as I've become familiar with the quality and the feel of higher end ties, I saw this tie in, um, in the Goodwill and never have heard of this brand. Um, never seen it, not familiar with it at all. I've never, never seen it on eBay, but because I saw all of those details and those features on it, I looked it up on eBay and I found a whole bunch of um, listings for this of sold ties and they're selling for a lot of money. So we'll jump over real quick here and I'll actually show you guys a screenshot of some of the ties that have sold from this brand and the price points that they're selling at. Oh, and before we jump over guys, it would be hugely helpful to me if you hit the thumbs up button. Also be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. I promise I will work very hard to make it worth your while with each video I come out with. Comment down below with any of your thoughts, if you have ideas for future videos, and then let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what some of those are selling for. All right, so what we have here is our eBay um, sold listings section under Charvette Tie. Um, all I've done as far as filters is gone down and um, selected pre-owned and I've only got ties that have sold here in the last 90 days and I've also done only ties that have sold over $35. So you can see um, in the last 90 days 184 of these ties have sold for over 35 bucks. Um, and if you know me, you know when it comes to ties you're largely buying them for two three bucks. If you're selling them for over 35 uh, you could be doing really well. But look at some of the price points that you're going to see um, on these. We've got $63. Um, here's one that was listed for $109, a best offer accepted. Uh, we've got a lot in here. Buy it now, $38.04. So somebody paid exactly that, $38.04. We had another one, $59.95. That's not a best offer sale. That is exactly what was paid for it. Um, you could see we've got several where the best offer, you know, it started at $80. Um, they took a best offer on it. Um, but you're looking at, at pretty consistently ties that are selling $50 and above, um, even without best offers. That's just the buy it now price. I have never heard of this brand up until I stumbled across it in a Goodwill. And had I not known that the silk ties made in France are worth looking at or had I just solely been focused on do I recognize this brand name I very well might have overlooked this tie if I hadn't you know really paid attention to touching and feeling the different ties that I've worked with and sold um, and all I was obsessed with was what's the brand name then I'd miss opportunities to find products like this that can make you a lot of money. I mean, in this particular instance, here's a used tie, 48 bids. It ended up going for $175. So you just never know what you could stumble across that could be very, very valuable if you are uh, equipped with enough knowledge to actually recognize that. All right, and then this next one, guys, is an older item. I am sharing a screenshot from an old Instagram page I used to post some of my more successful uh, eBay sales on. Uh, this is probably the single best or second best item that I've ever thrifted at a Goodwill. Um, and I sold this not quite two years ago now. Um, but this is just a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I had never heard of this brand, St. John Coates. Um, if anything, I had seen St. John's Bay, which is not a great brand. Um, and, you know, the person at Goodwill may have thought St. John's Bay as well, um, looking at this. But I happened to notice it because it was this really beautiful woven leather jacket. And it, the photo kind of shows it, but it's, it's woven with leather and actual suede leather. Um, and I could just tell the stitching of it was very high quality. Um, so I picked this thing up. It was for sale for $16 and I listed it and it sold within a week. 
for my full asking price you see there of $365 plus the shipping. So $16 into $365 on a brand that I had never heard of. I'd never seen an eBay uh, seller talk about or anybody talk about on YouTube. There was no reason for me to know about this brand. I don't shop at a store that carries this brand. I just happened to be familiar enough at that point with leather items that I saw what looked to me to be a very high quality leather. And that was enough to get me to then search St. John on eBay at the store, buy this item for $16 and turn it into a $365 sale in a week. That's the type of skill set that you want to develop if you're going to become a thrifter on eBay and really hit higher price points. Not be trying to survive on these 10 to $20 sales, but start hitting some of these larger profitable items because you can find them at thrift stores. You just have to know enough that you don't skip over them. Um, this is you know, probably one of my favorite examples when people ask me just how much you can make selling used clothing on eBay because uh, I tell them this and, and they a lot of times have a hard time believing me. Um, luckily, I've done you know a few items similar to this type of margin, um, and it's just the best feeling in the world. But you know you have to really invest in yourself and, and continue to learn. The more you learn, the more you earn. Hopefully, that makes sense, and uh, it kind of gives you an idea of what I'm stressing uh, for you to kind of take it to the next step in 2021. But really, what I'm trying to say is. You can't just get hung up on these brand names. I know I've made some videos that have talked about the top selling brands and I've used those. Just like I mentioned in the comments, there's a lot of people that they get upset because they expect that just because they buy a particular brand means they're gonna make a lot of money with it and they're ignoring these other things that play into the picture. So as Goodwill continues to price certain brands to levels that just don't make sense anymore and as uh, particular brands fall out of favor and get replaced by others. You gotta start to understand what it is that's making those brands successful and be able to start identifying uh, the particular features that things have in common so that you can just stumble on those you know, rare pieces of, of gold that are at your thrift stores, that are in your garage sales. Those are the items people are gonna overlook. But by you starting to find the common features between those brands, um, that's what's going to allow you to stay a step ahead of everybody else in identifying what the hottest new items will be or finding those one-offs that have a tremendous amount of value. So if you guys found this video helpful, please again hit the thumbs up button for me. Uh, follow along by hitting the subscribe button to see more of my content and be sure to comment down below with any of your thoughts if you have anything you'd like to see a future video on. And until next time, Happy selling. Talk to you soon.